Hello everyone, my name is Chris, I'm an engineer with Opaque Multimedia, and today I'm going to be taking you through how exactly to start up a new Unreal Engine project and install and test our plugin Connect for Unreal. So let's get started. Now I should note that before, um, as we were starting this up, I'll just launch Unreal, um, this has actually, no, sorry, we have the expectation here that you have already installed the Connect SDK, that's the latest Connect for Windows version 2 SDK um, from Microsoft in order to start um, this project. So that's that's been done on this computer, but um, nothing else. We've got Unreal installed, we've got Connect installed, just vanilla installations. We have Connect open five, uh, sorry, 4.5.1. We're going to grab some starter content. Uh, sorry, no starter content, we'll just use engine. And I'm going to start a new project. So let's call it connect, oh, sorry, um, K, K for you test. Pop that on the desktop and let's go. So once this is created, we'll install the blueprint, sorry, the uh, plugin. We'll install our plugin and um, show you some simple demonstrations as to how you might be able to use it. So I'll briefly note, if we go to Window Plugins here, um, at the moment we can't see anything installed. So it's just blank down here. We see lots of built-in, nothing under installed. So I'm going to close this down, and we go into the root, if you will, um, uh, location of our U project, of our project here. We're going to make a new folder and call it Plugins, capital P, Plugins. Plugins. So now we can take Connect for Unreal and we just drag it in here. Now when it's inside the plugins folder, which is next to your U project, on startup, Unreal Engine will look for it and detect it and, depending on the plugin, for this one it will, install it and enable it. So once this um, comes up, we can go to Window, Plugins, Installed, Connect, Connect for Unreal. There we go, so we're ready to go. Now, in order to access the functions and the variables from the Connect, our architecture um, demands that we need to use either the Connect Player Controller actor or the um, anything which inherits from this Connect Player Controller. So to do that, what we're gonna do is get a new game mode going. So we add an actor, we add a game mode, and we're gonna call it BP game mode and yep, that's all good so we can go to project settings maps and modes selected game mode and let's change that to our custom BP game mode which we just created a second ago okay so now you notice player controller class is set to player controller let's change that to connect player controller so that's very important it needs to be connect player controller or anything which inherits from Connect Player Controller. That's where we'll get our functions and our variables from, and how we'll make the Connect magic happen. So let's actually do something with that now. We'll make a new class blueprint, we'll have it an actor, call it BP Test Actor, okay, and we'll open that for editing. So we can see the graph here. Now what I'm going to do is but first I'm going to get a reference to our KPC, our Connect Player Controller. So I'm going to at startup on begin play. We're going to use this handy little function, get player controller. So this returns us the current player controller, which we know to be KPC, but we'll need to make sure that uh, we're actually casting it to a Connect Player Controller because in theory it could be any kind of player controller. So let's now, we've got our connect player controller here. We can drag that out and let's set that to a variable just to avoid some spaghetti later on. And I'm gonna name that KPC, KPC. Okay, so this is on, on begin play. That's all tidy up there. So now we're going to evaluate the scene that the connect views every tick. And we're going to apply the um, result of that as an input in order to move things around in our scene. So we're going to take what the connect sees and put it in our scene. We're going to apply this for this demonstration, a one-to-one -one mapping um, from the hands onto little spheres. So let's get started. Let's take a tick, event tick, 
And the first question we need to ask is, whose hands are we tracking? So we've provided um, with our Connect Player Controller, well, like all other functions, you can drag out and you can go Connect, and you've got everything that we provide right out here. So from that list, for the moment, what I'm actually going to go is get centered body. So this will look in the scene for any bodies, any people who are in front of the connect, and it will uh, output an enum, which determines, uh, sorry, which represents them every tick. So if they move to the left or to the right, um, as long as they're still within the frame, they'll have the same body. So we've got the centered body. Now what we need to do, we'll get the key to again, we'll drag out from the connect list, we can see there is a get joint absolute position. And we can also search for it with just get joint absolute position. And if you're not um, finding that it's coming up, by the way, just make sure you're dragging out of the KPC because that's where the function is being called. So drag out, get joint absolute position. So what we want to do is we say we have this body, we know who we want to look at. Now we search for exactly what, and that's going to be the left hand. Brilliant, so now we've got our left hand. So now we've got the input, now we need the output. We need something to actually move in our scene. Now for this, I'm going to set up a hierarchy here of components and subcomponents. The first one is going to be a scene object. Now the reason I'm doing this is because if, um, you would like, ideally, to be able to move around um, the object and the subcomponents you're moving around with your hand into anywhere in your world. If you just move in an absolute fashion, then they'll always be orbiting your world coordinates within the space of, you know, for example, two meters in front of your connect. And you obviously might want to interact with things more than two meters away from the origin of your world. So this is one of the ways we can do it. We just drag the scene around. And then if we have the subcomponents moving relative to this, then they'll be doing whatever they need to do wherever you want them to do it. So let's now make two subcomponents. Um, let's start with a static mesh. Okay, there it is. Let's call it left hand mesh. And let's actually assign that something so we can see what it's doing. I think let's open up the engine content, see if there's anything useful. Arcade editor sphere. So there it is. Arcade editor sphere. Okay, now this is good, but it's very big. So let's scale it down a bit. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So I'm just setting the scale down here. That's good. So we've got the left hand. Let's make one for the right too. We can cheat and duplicate. Right hand mesh. Brilliant. Okay, so we can compile this. And if we move back to our graph, you see we've got this little um, vector here, which we can move into things. We can use as an input. In this case, we're gonna go left hand mesh. Let's get the left hand mesh. And let's set, so, oops, what set, relative location. So now we know what we want to move, and now we know where, relative to its owner, its parent, we want to move it. And that's it. So now the left hand will move the left hand orb. And we want to do that for both hands. So let's duplicate this, move it slightly to the left, still on our event tick, happening every tick. And we'll also drag through our centered body, a little bit messy, but that's okay, we haven't got very much. So we're dragging through the body we want to track, and we change this to the right hand, which we would like to track. Pardon me, the right hand. And instead of the left hand mesh, we're gonna drag out the right hand mesh and do a get. Okay, so we get the position of the left hand, set the position of the left mesh, get the position of the right hand, set the position of the right mesh. Okay, and that should be just about ready to test. So, let's get our blueprint, drag it out, just make sure it is compiled and saved. And um, I'll just get our tester Liam to come out and demonstrate our connect functionalities. Liam is our technical artist and partner here at Apeg. And okay, so we're ready to go. Let's play. So if Liam moves his hands up, the spheres move up and down they move down. And you notice that they're not very high above the ground. That's because the connect, um, sorry, the coordinates are actually such that zero 
can be imagined as a line drawn straight out from the Kinect's field of view, so the very middle. So if, um, if Liam moves his hands down to around the center of where the Kinect is viewing, you'll see in the little window that it's around the middle there, you see they're right at the kind of zero mark, and if he moves them down, now they go down, if he moves them up, they go up. If he moves them down below his feet, below his waist, they actually go invisible. And if he moves them high above his head, they're kind of half of his body height up. And there you have it, a simple demonstration. So in this um, tutorial, we just created a plugin. Uh, sorry, we created a new project. We installed the K4U plugin. We did all the setup necessary to get those um, that information out of the Kinect. And we applied it to two little spheres which move with your hands. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed it, and uh, be sure to look out for our next videos.